Welcome back to another Mobile Centrics Tips and Tricks, where I show you either a product or a pair. My name is Derek, and today I'm going to be showing you some tips and tricks on how to open up the iPad 10th gen. The easy way. First, I'm going to take here my heat mat and we'll put it down on there and let it warm up for a few minutes. It's actually quite possible to take apart these newer iPads without a heat plate, but it definitely helps to have. A good temperature range is probably between 50 to 70 degrees Celsius, but you don't want to leave it on too long as all iPads have backlights and if you leave it on too long at too high of temperature, you can get a wavy backlight as the filaments start to crinkle and, uh, and create a wavy effect. So be careful using heat plates for that reason. After a minute or so, I slack Evo. I can put a little bit of pressure down. And when I start to lift, what'll happen is you'll notice that the display will bow in the middle. And the goal here is to start to see some sort of movement on the edge. And you can see right there, we're starting to get it to want to separate. So I'm just going to leave it here with this little amount of, of pressure. I'm really not squeezing too hard, but we've already got some decent separation there. And what I'll simply do is while maintaining that, that little amount of tension, I'm going to take a thin piece of plastic and just get into the adhesive here and slice it away. Gentle movements, acting like a, kind of like a razor blade. I think everyone's against me, maybe something in the air. Am I paranoid? I swear a void is forming and they're scared. I walk a straight path. Just nice little strokes. Slicing, pulling the adhesive away from the frame. Now there's plenty of reasons you may be needing to open one for battery replacement, a charge port repair, or in this case, the cameras. Now we can just carefully make our way to the corner and continue the this technique of gently slicing through the adhesive. I'm gonna take the suction off here because by this time, everything's cooled down quite a bit. And I can place it back on the heat plate and give it a little bit more time to warm up. Now I'm gonna move the suction down towards the charge port area. And we'll put a little tension there. I'll make it look like I'm losing. Won't bother hiding my bruises. And when they finally think you're wounded, then it's your chance to be ruthless. And get around that corner. And work down this short side. And there we go, we've got it halfway up and almost there. We slice around the corner just a little bit there. Now we'll flip it over and go to this side and do the same thing. Now in doing it this way, you can basically, especially if you're not planning on replacing the digitizer, you can easily separate and retain the adhesive, the original adhesive, so that you don't destroy it. And from here, you can just let it fall down and let the heat. I like to leave it on the heat pad here so the edge can kind of warm up that adhesive so that it can do that. 
but I'm gonna go one more step and just make sure that that adhesive ended up on the digitizer side and not on the, the frame side by carefully slicing down the edge here. All right, and now that we've got it like that, the flex cables are easily flexible enough on this model that we can set it down here without too much tension. On them. You see how much play there is there? Now we have to remove the bordering screws that are different on this model than, than on previous models. And for this, I'm gonna be using a T3. T2 will also work, but a T3 to remove all of the bordering screws. And it's quite simple to keep track of what screws go where, as the screws at the top are black and the screws at the bottom are silver. And there are two more screws here at the bottom that hold down the display. From here, there is adhesive that's holding on to the top four legs there against the frame, but if you take your time and go slowly, this simple movement will break away that silicone and free the display up just like that. From this point, it's fairly simple. We've just got a couple brackets that hold down the flex cables for the display and the digitizer. There's one bracket. There's a little bracket here as well that covers up the connector for the proximity sensor and microphone at the top of the digitizer. And one more here covering up the second digitizer flex cable. We'll gently disconnect the digitizer. And set it aside and the display as well. And don't forget to isolate the battery before connecting anything back up. Can see it's down here just like all other iPads. So hopefully this video has shown you how easy it can be to open up the iPad 10th gen. Leave a comment below if there's something else that you'd like to see, either a product or a repair. Thanks a ton for watching. We'll see you in the next video.